So because I apparently really hate myself, I decided to read every single Suicide Squad book ever written. That's almost four decades and is literally hundreds of issues. So you know what? Let's run through everyone who has ever died on the squad. Fun fact, the exploding brain bombs are almost never the reason why they die, which is super surprising. Obviously, it took a lot of time to put this together, so if you find this interesting, then please consider subscribing to the channel. I am well on my way to 500,000 subscribers, and I would love your help to get there so I can continue to do these weird deep dives like this that completely obliterate my sleep schedule. Also, before we get too far into things, I need to make it very clear that while most of the deaths in this video are extremely tame, there are a couple of really bloody ones. So when you see this symbol on screen, that means that one of the more gruesome images is going to come up. So if you're squeamish, then feel free to skip those sections. Additionally, since this video is all about death, it's very likely to get demonetized, which is why I wanna give a big thank you to my sponsor for today's video, Ritual. Over the past year and a half, I have been really trying to take my health a lot more seriously, and a big part of that has been taking vitamins. What I like about Ritual is that they're transparent about what ingredients they use and why, without additives, fillers, or colorants. Just two easy to take capsules with 10 nutrients to fill the gaps in my diet. I personally take the Essential for Men, but they also have different multivitamins to suit your needs, like one for women, teens, ages 50 plus, prenatal, and postnatal. They're vegan-friendly, non-GMO, gluten-free, allergen-free, and contain no added sugar. Plus, they're delivered monthly to your door for only a dollar a day. They also have more than just vitamins, as they just launched an entire range of essential protein shakes. Be sure to check out Ritual at ritual.com drake, and if you use the code drake at checkout, you will get 10% off your first three months. So thank you very much to Ritual for making sure that this video makes at least a little bit of money. But now, let's get into some of the more, less healthy characters in DC Comics. The Suicide Squad was first created to help take down the villainous dark side after President Ronald Reagan outlawed superheroes in the United States. Among the first of the team was this guy, Blockbuster. He's one of those generic, dumb, strong dude characters, and was unceremoniously killed off during a fight with one of Darkseid's minions, which makes him the first death of the Suicide Squad. After the team's debut, they were given their own solo book, and in the second issue, it had its first death, Mindboggler. She has the ability to create illusions and manipulate people's emotions, and was shot by one of the bad guys, who then took her body and then made a digital version of her that's under their control. When the hero Hawk was taken prisoner, a brand new Suicide Squad was assembled, and not many of them made it out alive. Among the team was Clifford DeVoe, aka The Thinker. He has the Thinking Cap, a helmet that grants various mental powers like telepathy and telekinesis. DeVoe was betrayed and killed by another member of the squad, the Weasel, who we'll be getting back to in a moment, because the Thinker actually has a weird thing that needs to be explained first. See, in this video, I'm trying not to include characters that only seemingly died, because then we'd be here for like two hours. But even though Clifford very much was dead, he was brought back to the comics about a decade later, and there was zero mention of the Suicide Squad book. Now, the main writer of that book was Grant Morrison, who famously doesn't care about continuity all that much, and the Thinker did die at the end of that issue anyway, so it's no big deal, but it's pretty odd that that death was never brought up. Anyway, back to the Weasel. Contrary to popular belief, he's not a were-weasel or a weasel creature. He's just a disgruntled university professor who wears a costume. After he killed the Thinker, the team's leader, Rick Flagg, donned the Thinking Cap for the rest of the mission, but an amount of DeVoe's consciousness still remained inside of it and corrupted Flagg, which forced him to take revenge on the Weasel for killing the Helmet's former master. Also in this incarnation of the squad was Psy, a powerful psychic, and Mr. 104, a scientist with the ability to change his body into any of the then-known 104 elements on the periodic table. Both of them were killed by Russian forces. Next up is Shriek. She has wings and a sonic scream, and was shot on her first mission. That brings us to Dr. Light, and boy, this one is a doozy. Okay, so there are actually three Dr. Lights, and they are all important to this story. There's the original, Jacob Finley, Arthur Light, who's a Teen Titans villain and the one that actually joined the squad, and Kimio Hoshi, a hero that took up the mantle later on. Okay, so Arthur has a whole slew of light-based powers that come from his suit, which he stole from Finley, who he accidentally killed. From then on, Jacob's ghost haunted Arthur, and constantly encouraged him to become a hero. Well, on a Suicide Squad mission to Apocalypse, Arthur finally gave in and acted heroically, only to be killed and go to hell. While among the fire and brimstone, Arthur and Jacob were tormented by a demon who brought Arthur back to life, only for him to die a second time by suffocating inside of his coffin. 
The demon then put Finley inside of Arthur's body, who was able to dig himself out of the grave and take a joyride in his new skin suit. Well, Arthur was able to break out of hell and take control of Kimio, who was conveniently learning how to astral project at the exact same time. Then Kimio goes into Arthur's body, which forced Finley out, and then it took her mentor doing some magic shit to get everyone back in the right body, and that put Finley back in hell. So yeah, Arthur came back to life in the most because comics way possible. Okay, so that was a lot, so here's a palate cleanser. Raven is a terrorist the Suicide Squad previously fought and later drafted. He doesn't have any powers, but he's a proficient killer with a lot of military experience, and he died in a fight against the terrorist Cobra. That brings us to the War of the Gods event, which is a War of the Great Gods. Black Adam came to Amanda Waller to enlist the help of the Suicide Squad, and multiple new members were brought on, only to be killed off. There's the Enforcer, an assassin with power armor who was killed by a wooden spear, Karma, a guy who can give people bad luck, which apparently includes himself considering that he got shot, and then there's Grant Morrison, like, as in the writer that I mentioned earlier. Okay, so a bit of backstory here. Grant Morrison wrote the Animal Man book, which got super meta, completely obliterated the fourth wall, and in the last issue that they wrote, Morrison directly interacted with Animal Man. It was a bizarre comic and is a must-read for any comic fan. But here's the thing. By putting themselves into the book, Grant Morrison then became a character in the DC Universe, which is pretty dangerous considering just how much power they wield. Plus, by having someone else write Morrison, the surreal feeling of being controlled by another writer in the same way that they controlled their characters is an interesting concept that's lightly explored in the Suicide Squad issue. But as a part of the squad, Morrison got writer's block in the middle of the battlefield, which clouded their omniscient powers and led to their death. It's an interesting and somewhat believable way to eliminate this paradoxical character slash avatar from continuity. Next on the chopping block is Adam Cray, aka The Atom. He has shrinking powers and was killed by a nail while in tiny form by a member of the Micro Squad, a group of very small assassins. Then there's Sidearm. He's kind of like Dr. Octopus since he has a vest that creates additional metal arms, but he betrayed the team and was instantly taken out by his teammate, King Shark, before he could cause any real harm. A few years later, a brand new Suicide Squad was made, and nearly all of them died on their first mission. The first one down was Big Sur. Real name, Doofus P. Ratchet. He's another stupid strong guy and was killed by an exploding child. This was followed by Clock King. He's really smart, especially when it comes to time, and can predict how things will go down with solid accuracy. Which is too bad that he didn't predict being shot up by the people who made the exploding children. The rest of the team was killed in a similar fashion to Clock King, but they managed to survive. Yet, this new Suicide Squad team still needed fresh blood in order to destroy a colony of genetically altered super ants. One of the new recruits was Eliza, a woman who can talk to animals. She actually tried to reason with the ants, but they ate her anyway. This was then followed up by Larvanaut, who is a dude with a killer tail, yet another big strong guy named Putty, and a chap with lightning powers named Bolt. They were all created specifically for this issue, and like Eliza, they were all eaten by the super ants. A few issues later, a nuclear-powered character named Reactron was brought onto the team, who has a super suit that lets him do all of the usual superhero stuff, like flight, super strength, and vulnerability, and shoot energy beams. But he was accidentally frozen by his teammate, Killer Frost, and several chunks of him were lost when his frozen body was shot at by enemies. In order to prevent Reactron's body from exploding like a nuclear bomb, the island that his corpse was on was yeeted into space. But much like the thinker before him, Reactron was brought back a few years later with no explanation, only to be killed off in that same return issue. Basically, if you're in the Suicide Squad and manage to come back to life, then there is an extremely high chance that you're just going to die all over again as soon as you return. After being in the espionage game for a long time, Amanda Waller got a promotion and had to dismantle the Suicide Squad, but she made her own secret group beforehand. The problem, though, is that they went rogue. One of their members, Tattooed Man, has the ability to bring his tattoos to life and betrayed the squad, leading to the death of Punch, a jester jewel thief. When the team found out about the Double Cross, Mirror Master turned Tattooed Man into glass and Punch's wife shattered him to pieces. Oh yeah, there's also Javelin, that guy whose entire thing is throwing javelins. He was hit by a car and died in that issue, or maybe he didn't since he popped back up a few years later, no questions asked. But of course, all good things must come to an end, and Amanda Waller was demoted back to her previous position, which means that there's a new Suicide Squad again. 
This time the goal was to take down the Black Marvel family, which consists of Black Adam, his wife, and his brother-in-law. One of this new squad's members was Persuader, a guy with an insanely powerful axe, and when he hurt Adam's wife, her brother retaliated against Persuader in a truly gruesome fashion. A couple of years later, there was yet another new squad, and this was an all-out bloodbath. See, half of the team formed a coup with their leader, a big strong guy named the General, personally popping off the head of Blackguard, a guy who can make energy weapons and whose real name is Dick Hertz. Another one of the traitors was a new version of the Thinker. This time, it's a guy named Cliff Carmichael, and he took control of a big chemical monster on the team named Chemo, which he used to melt Windfall, a lady with wind powers, and was put down himself when he was shot and killed by Amanda Waller's right-hand man. But wait, there's more! Twister, she's a woman with the ability to cast illusions and was killed by another traitor in the group, White Dragon, a literal Nazi in power armor who was actually one of the squad's first ever targets way back in the 80s when he was known as the racist vigilante, William Hell. Not a single tear was shed when White Dragon was taken out though by his explosive former squad mate. And then the last of the traitors was Marauder, a cyborg mercenary who's more machine than man at this point, who was taken out by Captain Boomerang. Last but not least is Yasmin Soze, who is a sharpshooter that was brought on to replace Deadshot, only to be killed by Deadshot. Now, I'm sure you're probably thinking, how is there so much runtime left in this video if that was the last one? Well, that's because DC Comics had a huge reboot in 2011, and there is now a whole new cast of characters to kill off in bigger and bloodier ways. If you'd like more information about the reboot, then check out my dedicated video on the subject, because I am not wasting any more time. The first fatality of this new series was a guy with electric powers named Voltiac. He was actually killed by Deadshot so that the mission they were on would have a supervillain to blame for all of the chaos. He comes back to life with zero explanation because it turns out that Amanda Waller brought him back with a special life serum, which is something that was also used on Deadshot and Harley Quinn later on in the series. This is followed by Lime and Light, twin sisters with hologram powers. Lime was arrested and immediately started to blab about the Suicide Squad, so Waller activated her brain bomb in order to keep the team's existence a secret. And yes, this is the first time that one of those bombs was activated. See, back in the day, the Suicide Squad actually used explosive bracelets, which were activated a couple of times, but they weren't fatal. But anyway, Lime's sister Light was killed by Deadshot a couple of issues later by using her as a human shield. Then there's Savant, who stepped on an active landmine and didn't move out of fear of it blowing up. We never saw him get off of it and have never seen him since, so you do the math. We also have Crowbar, whose entire thing is having a magic crowbar. He was put up against the hero Vide, who accidentally overloaded his power and killed the villain as a result. Next up is Daniel West, the Reverse Flash, the evil speedster uncle of Kid Flash. Ever since he fought Barry Allen, Daniel's powers were on the fritz, and he actually blew out his knee while running on a Suicide Squad mission, and completely defeats the point of having super speed. However, Daniel actually had a heroic death as he pushed through all of the pain in order to get a bomb outside of a crowded city, which went off, with him being the only casualty. Alright, so this one's actually a little tough since it's not one person, but the Suicide Squad recruited some ninja man-bats, who are actually trained members of the League of Assassins, but are also bat people, because comics. We've seen at least one of them die when he was nearly killed, and Amanda Waller exploded his brain bomb to put him out of his misery. Then you've got this chick, Battleaxe, who, you guessed it, has a battle axe. Her brain bomb blew up when she was hit by a sonic attack and was followed up by Mad Dog, a boring mercenary that once fought the squad but was captured and drafted, only to be killed on his first mission when Captain Boomerang kicked him out of a car and told Waller that he was deserting, causing her to blow up his brain bomb. Total dick move, but it's kind of funny, and that way of killing someone off should have been done in at least one of the movies. But actually speaking of the movies, the comics got a brand new Deadshot, Will Evans. It was never flat out confirmed, but this guy was most likely introduced to look like the incarnation of Deadshot from the 2016 movie, since this comic came out around the same time. I mean, his name is Will for crying out loud. Anyway, he betrayed the team and was killed by the real Deadshot, and was just as forgettable as the first Suicide Squad movie. Also forgettable is Zumax. He seems to be this weird chimera dude with almost zero dialogue and just exists to be killed off by El Diablo. Zumax was followed up by many other pieces of cannon fodder that Waller used to create an entire B team of minor and or one-off characters to take over for an issue while the main squad was busy. 
Among them was the exploding child baby boom, contortionist ragdoll, this monstrous green swordsman Scorpio, shimmer the matter manipulator, and Dow Jones, a martial artist that can also create force fields. Wait, Dow Jones? Like, the stock market? Even though the character has nothing to do with stonks and is basically just a pun to capitalize on her Asian nature? What a weird, vaguely racist name. The 80s were weird, man. Almost the entirety of the B-team suffered gruesome deaths, with only two survivors, Merlin the Archer and Scream Queen the Vampire, the latter of which Waller blew up for basically no reason. I'm actually going to censor this image because it is by far the goriest out of any death the Suicide Squad has ever had. There's also Hack, a complete Harley Quinn fangirl that has digital powers. She was killed by Captain Boomerang, but became a ghost in the machine, so she didn't technically die, but she did make the squad's life a living hell out of revenge, so sure. Drake from the future here. I forgot to mention that Captain Boomerang was killed in an explosion when he accidentally freed General Zod, but then Hack made a digital copy of him and brought him back to life, which really sucks considering that he's the one that killed her. I also forgot to include Yo-Yo, who is a guy that can increase and decrease his weight like a yo-yo. Um, he was eaten by King Shark, but then it was revealed that he was still alive inside of his stomach, but then Deadshot blew up his brain bomb in order to take out some bad guys later, so he did actually die there. Also, you can't forget about Suicide Squad Black. They're a special team that was created to deal with magical threats, and their first mission was to take on a bunch of wielders of corrupted magic weapons. Two of their members, a gargoyle lady named Snargoyle and an alchemist named Alchemaster, were taken out, with Alchemaster having his brain bomb blown up as well when the bad guy's leader wanted to study his remains. Back on the normal squad, there's a couple former members of the League of Assassins, Snakebite, who's a snake man who tried to ditch the squad and had his brain bomb blown up, and Lawman, a psychic cowboy that was killed off screen. This brings us to my all-time favorite Suicide Squad series ever, Tom Taylor's run from 2019. What's interesting here is the premise. A new squad was sent in to take on a group called the Revolutionaries. Depending on who you ask, they're either freedom fighters or terrorists, but what's indisputable is that they are all people who have been affected by the Suicide Squad in some way, shape, or form. Now, the squad assembled to take them on wasn't the best. I mean, Magpie, a generic assassin? Cavalier, a swordsman with a gimmick? It's no surprise that they were both killed, with Magpie being taken out off screen and Cavalier very much not being killed off screen. At the end of the first issue, the revolutionaries were forcibly drafted into the Suicide Squad, and the government even blew up one of their newly implanted brain bombs just to show that they were serious. Outside of that though, the death toll in this book was actually pretty small. One member of the squad, simply known as the Shark, not to be confused with King Shark, was killed by one of the revolutionaries in an act of revenge for him eating his brother. And when the revolutionaries betrayed their superiors, Jog, a guy with super speed but in short bursts, managed to get the explosive triggers for the brain bombs out of everyone's hands. But because he saved himself for last, he wasn't able to get his detonator in time and was blown up. But it's okay, he came back to life when it was revealed that he's actually the son of the Grim Reaper of the Gods, which I covered in my video all about the DC Grim Reapers. What's surprising though, is that Deadshot was also finally killed off in this book by Black Mask. Deadshot has been the longest running member of the squad, both before and after the reboot. His name is synonymous with the Suicide Squad, and he was killed off by a gun to the face by a minor Batman villain. Kind of a lame way to go. That brings us to the most recent series at the time of this recording, where a brand new team of no-names was assembled to break out the assassin Talon out of Arkham Asylum to recruit him for the squad, and they were almost entirely killed in the first issue. Among the casualties was Lightning Guy Bolt, movie-inspired serial killer film freak, and generic assassin Shriek. Because things got out of hand, Waller actually sent in a backup team to extract the survivors, but in the process, a couple more Z-list characters were killed off. Mind Warp the Mind Manipulator, and Exit the Portal Maker. So yeah, that's five dead just to recruit one guy. Not a great trade-off. Finally, that brings us to the last death at the time of this recording. Keymaster, the portal maker that was brought on to replace Exit, who tried to ditch the team and was blown up. Kind of an underwhelming way to end this video, but a very Suicide Squad way to die. Since note-taking for this video was extremely chaotic, there is a chance that a character or two might have slipped through the cracks, but I think I was pretty damn thorough. However, if I did miss anything, then feel free to politely let me know 
down there in the comments. And while you're down there, let me know who your favorite dead character was. If you want to know more about DC Comics, then good news, I have a dedicated playlist that has every single one of my DC videos in one convenient place. So if you liked this, then maybe consider checking some of those videos out. But anyway, I'm going to get back to work on making more Suicide Squad videos to milk this research for all it's worth, so hopefully you learned at least a little something new, and hopefully, I'll see you next time.